Hello and welcome to Stone Lee, 225 Waterloo Avenue, the home of Robert Cumberland Kennedy. Stone Lee was built uh, around 1880 uh, by the Kennedy family, uh, a legacy of stonemasonry in the city of Guelph. And although here on Doors Open, we tell the story of a particular home and an address, I really think that the story of 225 Waterloo is the story of the quarrying industry in Guelph as a whole. So the story of quarrying in Guelph really has to do with location. Uh, Guelph is sitting on top of what's known as the Guelph Formation, the largest dolomitic limestone deposit um, in this part of North America. And so the uh, building material, the raw building material being here um, lent itself to a number of surface quarry uh, operations being developed in and around Waterloo Avenue, Bristol Street, Essex Street, all the way out to what we now know as the, the Doe Lime Quarry or uh, the Guelph Quarry or Guelph Limestone. So this home is actually one of four Kennedy homes in the same block. Uh, 41 Meadowview, uh, the original home of David Kennedy, was built in the 1860s. Um, and uh, his three sons uh, built homes on this block of land that was owned by the Kennedy family. So Stone Lee, 225 Waterloo, was built by Robert Cumberland Kennedy, one of his sons. Um, and uh, he was also a stone mason. Uh, his father, David Kennedy, was a master mason. Um, and a builder and a contract and a quarry owner. David Kennedy arrived in uh, Canada around 1851 uh, with another stonemason, Thomas Dobby. Uh, by 1854, they had settled in Guelph and begun their quarrying and building operations. So you see a real boom of limestone building in Guelph uh, starting in about the 1860s. Robert Cumberland Kennedy was one of several sons uh, who built uh, houses on the land owned by David Kennedy. His son John built a house on Galt Street, his son William just a few doors down on Waterloo, and here at 225 Waterloo we have Robert's house. This house is a two-story Georgian center hall plan. Uh, the uh, Georgian feature uh, is symmetrical uh, windows, uh, so we have three windows on top, two windows and a door on the first floor. Uh, it's very symmetrical um, because it allowed the cross breeze of uh, air through the windows, so the side windows are also aligned with the central windows in the front and the back. As you enter the front hall, uh, you will see that there is another window aligned with the door that allows a cross breeze. So stone house construction was very environmentally friendly because not only was the stone quarried on the land, um, but a thick stone wall is the perfect cooling and heating in the winter time. Uh, it has what we call thermal mass, meaning it takes a long time for the heat of a summer day to penetrate to the inside wall or the cold of a winter day to penetrate to the inside of the house. So both summer and winter, the house was very well insulated against the elements. The wall is approximately 18 to 24 inches thick and rubble stone construction, which is a very, very solid method of stonemasonry construction. Uh, the through stones and the facing stones mean uh, when in a well mortared uh, construction method that the house can freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw uh, and will sh shift over time but settle into itself. So it's a very solid form of construction. I think it's important to remember that the master masons who were building these stone homes and stone buildings throughout Guelph were also the same masons who were building the castles and the lighthouses and the bridges of Europe. And so the masonry construction method was very time tested. Those buildings can be a thousand years old and still standing today. So I have great hopes that, uh, that this home will be standing hundreds of years from now. My husband Arnie and myself embarked on a massive renovation of this building in 2017. Um, when we bought it, it had been adapted to the previous family and had served as a family home for 40 years. When we purchased the home, part of the renovation was peeling back all the layers of previous renovations and taking it back to its core elements in order to preserve the parts of the architecture 
that were significant to the original construction and also adapt it for modern use. As we enter through the front hall, we can see through to the kitchen. Uh, that was one of the first walls that we took down. We didn't intend on exposing the stone wall. Uh, it was part of removing a pantry. And once we exposed it and we saw how beautiful it was and we saw the, uh, the hand-hewn beam above the door, we felt that this was one wall that we could leave exposed and highlight as part of the original construction. When we exposed the stone wall, we found the original hand-forged square iron nails and we repurposed them as a pot rack uh, so that we could set off those uh, original components of the home rather than disposing of them. We've repurposed as many elements uh, of the original home as we possibly could. Uh, the old kitchen window needed to be reset, so we repurposed it for a cottage uh, garden shed in the backyard. As we enter into the dining room, you'll see some of the crown plaster moldings that were added in the 1970s by a previous owner, George Hewson. Uh, Hewson was a, uh, a plasterer. He was a craftsman. He's responsible for some of the beautiful restoration plaster work in uh, Old City Hall, now the Ontario Court um, on Carden Street. So part of the renovation was removing the wall between the dining room and the kitchen so that we could showcase that stone rear wall much better. Uh, we worked with a structural engineer to design a, uh, a load-bearing beam and had to do some work in the basement in order to add uh, what we consider to be an even better uh, structural component to, to the home. So as we enter the living room, you'll see a cove uh, ceiling. This is plaster work again from George Hewson uh, and is a uh, um, very unique uh, uh, form of plaster work. Cove molding is uh, an artistic form of plaster molding. Um, you don't see it very often, so we really appreciated George Hewson's work and we left the living room uh, ceiling work as is. As we go upstairs, you'll notice some of the original railing. Uh, this was covered in uh, drywall when we moved in and we were able to uh, uncover uh, a significant part of the staircase so that uh, it was more open. As we head into the bathroom, um, the bathroom was a later addition after indoor plumbing became the norm. This was a bedroom. Uh, and it's a very unusual layout um, because of that original configuration. Uh, half of the one of the bedrooms was added onto the master bedroom to make a, a larger bedroom adjacent to the bathroom. At the back of the property, you will see the remnants of the Kennedy Quarry. The Kennedy Quarry ran from approximately the Hanlon Expressway all the way to Edinburgh Road. Uh, and there is very little uh, left of the exposed stone because nature, as it does, takes over, uh, fills in with organic material and uh, uh, plantings have taken place uh, that have masked the quarry. But the quarry is a face, uh, the slope of it, you can still see at the back of the property. One of the things we found in landscaping the back of the property is that any time we dug a hole, we found uh, limestone. So all of the garden edges are made up of um, limestone rocks that we have found uh, during the excavation and uh, it really highlights how much limestone was on the property to build the houses that are along Waterloo Avenue and in the neighborhood. So thank you for joining us at Stonely today. Thank you to the Arts Council for putting together Doors Open and celebrating the architectural history and the craftsmanship uh, that is found in the city of Guelph.